Hi everyone, it's Lee here for the 9-11 Blacklist and we are going for the 18th anniversary countdown. Well, what can we do? It is day six. Day six and I'm stretching, you know what? There's a big part of me which is actually struggling to keep up with this, to do this daily, honestly. Lifestyle and everything, it is so, so busy. But we are still going for it. So, what is the subject? For day six, we've had a different subject every day for the past six days leading up to uh, Wednesday, which will be the official 18th anniversary. Won't, won't it? It'd be the official 18th anniversary. Well, um, we are talking mainstream media. Good oh dear, where to start? Well, I think it's fair to say that the mainstream media showed us on September the 11th 2001 something we'll never ever forget and I think that it's something that is in you know emblazoned on our memory uh, on our collective memory I think I've said this in my live shows fairly regularly um, in as much as it is one of those things that you do remember what you were doing, where you were, etc., etc. I was in work, I was busy in the office doing some paperwork, and a patient came in to me and actually said, Lee, you've got to come and see this. And I came on the ward, and it was it's one of those busy Nightingale style wards, but at the time, uh, in 2001 we had a big screen TV in the male bay and a big screen TV in the female bay and from where I kind of arced around and, and looked up the ward I could actually see um, that on the news the Twin Towers and the smoke billing, billowing out of, of the Twin Towers and it's just one of those images that I will never ever forget it's just one of those things uh, I'll never ever forget um, and then consequently the day's events happened and you, you, you just it, it's just one of those things but the thing is and here's my point it's the mainstream media that gave us those images gave us those memories and invariably just like me they actively made us believe this is exactly what actually happened without even questioning it at all and I think we were all or most of us were in the same boat you know we were all thinking the same thing you know that although it did look unbelievable it was actually happening and I think this is something that many people still can't get their heads around it's wrapping your head around the fact that in many cases what you're seeing might not always be you know what they say seeing is believing and when you do your research especially into 911 and if you've got and if you've got a lot of research behind you you know you've gone down that rabbit hole and once you've gone down that rabbit hole seeing isn't always believing and i think Many researchers who have gone down that rabbit hole or shown any kind of interest in 9-11 will completely um, understand what I'm saying. So what I'm doing today, uh, like I said, the subject for day six is mainstream media. I could go on for ages and ages and ages. I think what I'm going to do very briefly is tell you about Operation Mockingbird. Now, Operation Mockingbird was a CIA run um, operation in the 50s. Now, this is something this, which was developed in the 50s by the CIA, right? And it was sole purpose was media manipulation. I it you not, ladies and gentlemen. For those of you who have done a lot of research, you'll know this already. 
but it was media manipulation. It was so it's always it's it's always been there. So when you fast forward to the JFK assassination in '63, and then you fast forward again to 9/11 in 2001, media manipulation has always been there. Do not um, put a brick wall up against this, guys. Trust me when I tell you that um, media manipulation was being carried out on 9-11. No question. It was, whether it was, you know, I think it probably was all part, part and parcel of the perpetrator's method of that day and how to engage the public, how to make them believe whatever they wanted them to believe. And what I'm telling you is gospel. It's the truth and it's it's not conspiracy at all. So as well as that, there is Operation Northwards, a declassified top secret document which was um, actually championed by um, by Chief Lemnitzer, but wasn't signed off by Jack Kennedy at all. This was in March of uh, I nearly said nineteen. It was of March of nineteen sixty-two. March. Now it wasn't signed off, and it was just a document. It's important to note that it was just a document, and it was um, essentially an idea um, of how. Uh, people can be manipulated into believing something if you get it get it check it out because people um, who have gone down that research rabbit hole will tell you that 9-11 or many aspects of 9-11 show many hallmarks of Operation Northwoods Um, and all you have to do is You don't even have to go down that rabbit hole, but just read that document and you will see how many areas of 9-11 and what actually happened on 9-11 have the earmarks of that very document which was produced in March of 62. So, like I said, the mainstream media is manipulated has been since many many decades ago and still does to this day I think on 9-11 it has um, many areas where it's visibly and notable that it has been manipulated I think that because it has the history and it has his like historical precedent that it has been manipulated. When Jane Stanley on the BBC said to the world that the uh, Solomon Brothers building or the World Trade Center Building Seven had collapsed twenty minutes before it actually had collapsed, um, it just rang true for all researchers going that. You know, she's saying it's already collapsed, and she's standing right in front of it, um, which was it was one of those research earmarks for people who, which just goes to show, this is pure manipulation. This is this is this is just shows you firsthand how the media has tried to manipulate the public into believing what it wants to believe. So then what researchers did then, they they went and looked at 9-11 in a more, on a more critical level. And they actively looked at how the mainstream media reported 9-11 uh, from the variety of different networks. And it became very clear that the networks were all singing from the same hymn sheet. And if you actually look at it, some of the researchers who have been, say, poo-pooed over the over the years, but um, 
No, Alexander Ace Baker and Simon Shack, um, some of those who have actually produced some very, very good documentaries, uh, actively saw things and actually produced in their films, uh, you know, uh, things which just showed um, how the man- the media were all doing the same thing and it was re- and it's there on film for you to see i actually used um i actually used this as part of um an episode i actually kind of looked at what just in part in part because obviously these their documentaries are le- very lengthy so i actually took something that both of them addressed and that was the dumping out of delay into real time so when the reporters did the reporting it actively looked like they were reporting in real time I actively did a video on this and I believe it's still on my Facebook uh, fan site you can check it out I'll have to check this out after I've put this together I'm almost positive I put it on my Facebook fan site and I believe it's still there. But uh, YouTube deleted it, deleted the video. They accused me of harassment and bullying and gave me a strike. Now, and said I'd gone completely against the uh, YouTube's community guidelines. And I was stunned. I mean, they'd already done it once with um, violence and graphic images. Again, I don't know where the heck they got that idea from. But they did it again. And they and th- this was the video. Basically, me talking about media manipulation. And how the various networks like CNN, Fox, ABC, NBC, BBC... You know, why NYW, I think it is, they were all singing from the same hymn sheet. And they had to for everything to fall into place. But dumping out of delay and actually going real time, they did it in a very clever way. And it was almost seamless, so people didn't even realize it was actually happening. And it was very clever and Simon Shack and uh, Ace Baker Alexander Ace Baker showed in their respective films September Clues and uh, the great American Psy Opera was it um, they showed how um, the mainstream media worked this and when I looked at it I could and I understood how and how it actually works and it does and I actually put it in my my documentary videos as well just in case you're wondering does it work does it actually happen today yes it does because I'll give you an example which I actually gave in my uh, videos uh, there is something the reality TV is is just it's everywhere in it reality TV is everywhere TV is everywhere. It's all over the world. It's not just in the UK. It's not just in the US, but all over the world. One of the major players of that has been Big Brother. And it has. It's gone all over the world. Um, and I know that it's it, it, it's uh, it's very, very, very popular. But what do... Because it's supposed to be live, and when they, when they show the... When they showed it, especially in the early years they showed a lot of it when it was live but what they act, what they actually do they show you the footage and then sometimes they do cutaways to say i don't know pieces of the house which doesn't have people don't have anything in it or a, a, or the cameras focusing on um the kitchen sink or something uh, with nobody in shot it's like a cutaway and you think what's going on there and then they cut back to the action you think well what's going on there well basically the reality of it is 
is that you're not watching live TV. Although they bill it as live, uh, or you know, or build it as live, you are not watching live TV because essentially you're watching it delayed by many about 30 seconds, maybe a minute. And what that does, it gives the producer of the show um, time to edit or delete or do a cutaway to to something if there's either if there's either language being used or I don't know defamatory kind of um, uh, conversation or religious uh, st- stuff that they don't want to be broadcast or even I don't know celebrities which um, uh, uh, names celebrity names which are being used which they anything anything that they don't want to be mentioned to be used they cut away just so it doesn't it it doesn't kind of uh, breach any of their rules so this kind of media manipulation has been going on and still goes on to this day because it because program controllers they don't want you to see the real deal that means everything without uh, the cutaways because of the uh, I suppose the production rules and regs that they're under and the thing is when you watch the news the news are exactly the same thing they they are governed by the same kind of regulations and if there's anybody on camera who are saying and doing or whatever the wrong thing, um, they have time to cut away uh, uh, or go for a different camera angle. So they don't get caught out a lot. And that's the reason why they don't get caught out a lot. So this is how they did it. This is how they managed to get 9-11, uh, especially the Twin Towers, especially the Twin Towers, uh, footage the way they wanted it. They had the camera footages, footages? That's not a word, is it? They had the camera footage uh, placed. They they showed it as they wanted it throughout the day. Uh, You will notice as well that uh, just to show how manipulated it was, that you didn't see any jumpers that day. Um, on that time, I actually watch and I've rewatched and rewatched, say some of the um, or many of the um, um, the news networks who actively showed this. Like I watched CNN and BBC and ABC, NBC and Fox and that, and you don't see any of the jumpers. Now, there's a part of me which thinks, well, that's that's fair enough because that's it's pretty harsh and uh, and it's pretty harrowing so because it's mainstream kind of daytime TV they don't want to be showing stuff like that which I totally get but what it does also show is that it wasn't live and there's um, and the way they did that was how they cut away to make sure they didn't show people who jumped that day but it all it does is just show how how your network, your media network, manipulates what you're watching, and so never be fooled into thinking that uh, it, what you're watching is is the real deal because somewhere along the line it is not. It is being controlled so you watch what they want you to watch. You know, not what you actually want to watch. It's what they want you to see. And uh, and the thing is, on 9-11, it was what they wanted you to believe as well. And that's another very interesting point. It's what they wanted you to believe. Okay? So, um, what we're going to do now, we're going to quickly flick through some of these, uh, well, what do you call them? Pieces of footage. Now... I'm going to start here at the Pentagon. You can see I'm at the Pentagon, can't you? So what I'm going to do, um, let's let's um, let's 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 run that. Um, I'm, I'm, he says I'm sure I'm sure I've, I have just made it run. Let me just have a quick look. 
Um, yeah. So below me is the footage that came from that fisheye lens um, of the Pentagon crash. And people, um, you know, they keep on and on and on. There's a load of research people saying, you know, there's definitely um, a, uh, you know, American Airlines Flight 77 in shot um, when this comes and, uh, and smashes into the Pentagon. And me, I can't buy it. I don't buy it at all. I, I really don't. I think that uh, if this is the what you're just about to see, if if people can convince me that there's a that this is the only footage um, of a plane hitting the Pentagon, you're talking rubbish. You know the FBI. I've got a lot to answer for, right? And maybe the Lawyers Committee for 9/11 can make them answer those questions. Over 80 pieces of footage should show something hitting the Pentagon apart from what you're looking at in below me right now. And it, it, there's no way you can even, no fancy kind of, yeah. There's nothing that can convince me. There's, there, look, it, Below, 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 below. And that footage, um, right, leads quite nicely into this. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. We're looking at a uh, live picture from Washington, and there is smoke pouring out of the Pentagon. It would appear that there has been another major explosion, this one in the nation's capital, you are looking at a scene of uh, apparent blast aftermath. There is smoke in the air over the Pentagon. We don't know whether this is the result of a bomb or whether it is yet another aircraft that has targeted a uh, symbol, the United States power, but there is smoke pouring out of the Pentagon. Um, this is coming at 9.43 Eastern Time. The president right now is on his way back from Florida. He had gone there for an educational event. In a brief remarks, he said this was an apparent terrorist attack on our country. We do have a couple of reports, one from AP, one from Reuters, reporting that an American Airlines plane was hijacked, that a United Airlines plane was hijacked, supposedly one of those two planes hijacked out of Boston. At this point, the Pentagon, the White House, the Capitol, and the Treasury have been evacuated in uh, Washington. In New York, all airports, tunnels, and bridges have been closed. And in Chicago... And the, as uh, he was actually reporting, Brian Gumbel, the South Tower came down. A ...secondary explosion on Tower 2. With that, we will leave you and turn it over to Dan Rabb. So, I find that fascinating because um, you, you, obviously you could see me just listening to that in my headphones. But it was interesting because initially, didn't Brian Gumble? he actually even turned around and said that that was um, part of uh, what could have been a bomb. He even admitted it could have been a bomb. Now, what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to get you guys uh, to watch some of these reports, which are um, above me and over there. And up there as well, and up there. So what, what I've got... Um, I'm going to show you um, the raw piece of footage which everybody keeps on asking me about, uh, which was shown on the news, and, and I'm thinking. And so I've got this piece of footage. So I'm going to show, keep. I'm going to show this piece of footage. It is raw, uh, but this is from Flight 93. Now, so I've gone over to Shanksville. So realistically, so far, there's been no kind of nothing that you can see of any kind, of any planes, of any kind. You're just going on what the media has actually told you, remember. And what the whole, the reason I'm taking you through these areas and just giving you a little taste of how the media can report is just to show you um, how it can, how it can evolve into, you know, how people evolve, um, what they think actively happened that day you've got um you know this footage is raw footage what you can see over over there but the thing is 
um, when this eventually came to the news networks, they they kind of chopped and changed some of this raw footage, and it's really fascinating because it's like I if I if I told you that um, you know United Airlines, a huge Boeing aircraft, inverted and actually crashed there. Would you believe me? Even if, even if, I mean, look, there's like, what do they call it? The um, emergency services are there, the people walking around, and it's like, well, what are we looking for? What? It looks like there's just like, like smoke creators down in, in that crater. Even the coroner said that he, he couldn't even see, see nothing. There were no, no bodies. No bodies at all. I mean, Look at these these guys walking around. I mean, um, it's supposed to be a crime scene, and uh, they're just what's going on. And this famous footage, which I even put in my intro titles now, it, it's supposed to be an inverted plane that has gone into a strip mine. Does that even look remotely like uh, an airplane? It's just fascinating to think that people. Um, were made to believe that it's it, it's just fascinating to see that just that on its own in that crater if you could call it a crater um apparently it's a it's an airplane and but guess what but guess what you guys you know even at the time just remember this you were told to believe that you were told to believe it and you believed it because you were told to you were told to by the MSM the mainstream media they said this is what's happened and guess what you believe them what why wouldn't you believe them after all this is this is this is how they this is these this is the news uh, people, this is this is what this is where they get the news from, isn't it? And we we believe what they put in front of us. And so, you, I mean, I didn't question anything at the time. I'm not saying this in a, any any critical way, because I'm exactly the same. I I I didn't I didn't believe it. I was just like, I I thought right, well, this is what must have happened then. A plane must be in there. A huge plane must be in there. Oh, that's just amazing. A plane's in there. You see, do you see how utterly ridiculous it is now? But people were still made to think. And with all these people walking around, you've got to think to yourself, what on earth were they looking for when there's nothing there to find? But apparently, but apparently, when they did a bit more digging, they found the black box. Yes, they did. They found the black box. And it just doesn't ring true. It just... Common sense. I think it, com, it comes from common sense, I think, at the end of the day. So, I'm going to wrap that up. I'm going to pause that, wrap that up, and... Um, what I'm going to do next is get you to watch um, this piece of footage uh, here. Now, I want you to watch it very carefully, right? Watch this piece of footage very carefully, but, okay, but what I want you guys to do is watch and listen because what you actually hear the reporter saying. And what you are watching is two completely different things. Because this reporter is saying about um, pres the president taking off. Okay? But what you actively see above my head, what you actively see isn't Air Force One. Air Force One is on the ground at Offord Air Force Base. What you see is the doomsday plane taking off. This is highly important because why on earth would the doomsday plane be taking off to begin? There's two of them. Two of them were in service that day 
and one of them was actively taking off on camera for the news people and the news guys they reported that it was actively Air Force One check check this out I don't know prove me wrong I, I just think that this is fascinating but don't you think it's rather interesting as well that um, the, this still that you can see here uh, was uh, taken from people emptying um, the World Trade Center 7 building as well I just think that's rather interesting if you, if you or you know for evidence guys for evidence look at the actual original um, network footages I've got it right and when you actually look at the network footages you'll know exactly what I mean watch Fox Networks watch NBC watch BBC watch CNN and you will pick up so so much so watch this and listen very carefully it's not long it's only um, about I don't know 40 odd seconds so you have to be quick right I might even repeat it let me just put on the headphones just so I can hear as well what's going on let me just listen to this as well so I'm going to listen listen to it and do do on the mic as well let's let's play this also this there is movement from the president of the United States he apparently has wrapped up a national security council E4B, meeting that he was Doomsday conducting plane. by phone at off at Air Force Base there you see Air Force 1 in the air that's not he Air Force 1 guys to the White House we learned from Karen Hughes, senior advisor to the president, that Vice President Cheney and National Security Advisor Condoleezza Rice were already at a secure facility now inside the White House, as are other on senior the ground. White House staffers. Apparently, it has been decided that the president will go back there, join them as they continue to formulate a response to this. Another key player here, the Secretary of Defense, uh, Donald Rumsfeld, he is not at the White House. He is at the Pentagon, even though there was a plane crash earlier there today. His office specifically not affected, so he remains there. Now, you see, didn't you see here a lot of things in that? Now, first of all, what you see is, like I said, in the still image, and as it, as it kicks in, you actually see these guys taking things, almost looting WTC7, okay? Um, and uh, God knows what they're looting. Um, and then on the on the camera at the very same time, right? The reporter is saying that Air Force One is taking off when actively you see the E four B Boeing seven four seven Doomsday plane taking off. And like you've heard me say previously in the past, when you see that taking off, the Doomsday plane when it's active, it is basically there to act. act um, when basically the um, the military command center cannot be done cannot be done from the ground and so they do it in the air from the planes from the air because you know you know it's it's all it's all going you know pear shaped on the ground but and then right at the end the reporter even turns around and says about Donald Rumsfeld you know, I think she said something about him going back to his office because his office wasn't affected by the um, by the huge explosion at the Pentagon. When, if you've done your research um, about the Pentagon explosion, you will know that Flight 77, if it was actually going to go for uh, Donald Rumsfeld's office, it would have act. It would have the the hijacker would have nosedived into into the Pentagon and probably gone into Don, Donald Rumsfeld's office but in um, as it happened it actually went into the E-ring where they were um, uh, uh, investigating the 2.3 trillion uh, which Donald Rumsfeld even mentioned um, um, the day before 9-11 so even in this 44 seconds on Fox so so much was actually talked about and seen and seen so that's, uh, but you see, like I said, it's all about mainstream media and in, indeed them manipulating you into what they want you to see and what they want you to believe. And this was all going on that day. But the thing is, you what you don't do, you don't take a step back and actually think, oh yeah, oh yeah. Do you? You actually believe everything is what they're saying. Now the next uh, piece of footage I'm going to show you is is this footage which I've been asked 
by many viewers to show. Uh, so um, because it kind of fell into this uh, kind of category, I thought that I would show it. Again, it's not really that long. It's only um, about a minute long, but the reason why it, the, it's a bit grainy as well. It's from CNN, but once, it, w once again, this piece of footage you've only ever seen, well, they have only published and shown once. They, they haven't repeated it ever. So it's like, it's, it's like, like I said, it's kind of grainy, second kind of great uh, footage. But there's a reason why they haven't repeated it. There's a reason why it's been relegated to the archive of CNN, and they probably wish that it hasn't been reported again and again. And this is the reason why. Actually, it was Bob Franken with an eyewitness who said it appeared that that Boeing 757, the American jet, American Airlines jet, landed short of the Pentagon. Can you give us any better idea of how much of the plane actually impacted the building? You know, it, it, it might have appeared that way, but from my close-up inspection, uh, there's no evidence of a plane having crashed anywhere near the Pentagon. The only site uh, is the actual uh, site of the building that's crashed in, and as I said, the only pieces left uh, that you can see are, are small enough that you could pick up in your hand. Uh, there are no large uh, tail sections, wing sections, uh, a fuselage, nothing like that anywhere around which would indicate that the entire plane crashed into the side of the Pentagon uh, and then caused the side to collapse. Now, even though if you look at the pictures of the Pentagon, you see uh, that the floors have all collapsed. That didn't happen immediately. Uh, it wasn't until a, almost about 45 minutes later uh, that the structure was weakened. And so, like I say, it's only about a minute long. It, I, you know, it, the actual, obviously, the footage on that has gone on, and, and it's really, it's a very fascinating listen to as well. Because when you actually listen to that and watch that as well, it, it's a truthful reporter, a truthful reporter, you know. But what does that tell you? It tells you. He's actively saying. He doesn't look as though a plane's even hit there at all. That's not what the mainstream wanted you to actually think. They don't didn't want you to think that at all. They want you to think that a plane hit that building because that's what they're going to be reporting all day and all night, etc., etc., etc. So this has been relegated into um, they don't want it shown. Interestingly, they had another report very similar to this around Shanksville, um, saying that there's nothing there, there's nothing even remotely, <laughs> um, no evidence of uh, of um, of a plane there at all. And and the thing is, again, that piece that piece of news footage, it was only ever aired once. So here we go. It's manipulating the viewer. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's manipulating the viewer. It's actually getting them to believe what they want you to believe, and maybe not really what has actually happened. And th is that censoring? Is that suppressing? Well, maybe. But guys, I'll let you into something that you don't even know just yet. That my episodes, my footage, my everything that I've put together for the 9-11 blacklist, for uh, the anniversary, everything that I have shown, anything that I'm putting together in any educational way, YouTube have actively, well, what they're saying, they demonetize me for the third time because they actually say that um, sometimes I, I will reuse certain pieces of news footage as you can see here, but there's a reason why I'm doing it and you can I'm doing it on an educational basis every single video that I put together every single video that um, I personally think demonstrates uh, something in a way uh, that can be of educational value everything that I put together for the videos for the live shows I tag education to it because 9-11 you know Tuesday September the 11th 2001 is is an ed it's an it's an education in how um, something happened, a major event happened in history, but what and who was really responsible 
I personally think has been misled and misinformed um, over the past 18 years. And this is just me. This is just me putting it together for you guys. And it's an educational platform for people to learn, no matter how old you are. And and I learn and I'm learning. But the crazy thing is, YouTube say that I've reused certain content. The reason why they demonetized me for the third time, that I reused certain content and the content that I have used and the videos that I've produced are of little or no educational value. I'll repeat that. They actively have said that my videos are of little or no educational value. I've got 8,800 subscribers who tell you different YouTube. Susan Kiki. YouTube creators, Team YouTube, I'd pay attention to that. You know what? I might not have billions of, of subscribers, but that's your fault. Because, you know, if you actually paid attention to the realities of what's going on around you, and especially this year, and the realities that have actually come forth, and the truths that have been told uh, in 2019, you, you're, you should be eating your hat right now. And you're telling me that the, the videos that I produce about 9-11 are of no educational value when we've got one of the former students of Lila, um, of Stuyvesant High School, Lila Nordstrom, is standing there repeatedly in Congress and in front of the, pres of pre of the President of the United States saying that it's because of government lies that people are ill and have died. So... They, YouTube really needs to pay attention. Really need to pay attention. So the last lot of clips I've got for you guys is, is well, we're going to start with the guy who I have got as my primary blacklister. And this piece of footage I actually used uh, to kick off um, Liars of 9-11 Exposed, which is my highest viewing video on the 9-11 blacklist which has got over two well I say 252,000 over a quarter of a million views guys over a quarter of a million views and it all started right and it all started with this uh, stretch big stretch Sorry. I know you said there'll be a time for politics, but you've also said you wanted to change the tone of Washington. Howard Dean recently seemed to muse aloud whether you had advanced knowledge of 9-11. Do you agree or disagree with the RNC that this kind of rhetoric borders on political hate speech? Yeah. Uh, look, there's time for politics. And, uh, you know, it's time for politics. And uh, I... Uh, it's an absurd insinuation. In that case, sir, can I follow up on something unrelated? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I personally think that's the best line of the lot. In, well, in that case, after pause, pause, pause uh, from Bush, well, is, well, in that case, can I follow up on something completely unrelated? Love it. I didn't. Think, I just think that's that's just absolutely fantastic. But there you go. This was reported live on CNN. And this goes to show, this was President Bush, he is my primary blacklister, and he, um, like I said, he might not have been part of the my hop, but he was certainly part of the lie hop. He let it happen on purpose. And this was reported live on CNN. You cannot tell me that this was done any other way. Now, uh, what I'm gonna go to next, is just going to bring this up and up and center again what you're looking at is the um, I, think, I believe this is the South Tower South Tower impact but once again you've got to look at it and watch it very carefully and when I talk about dumping out of delay you've got to listen to people who are actually um, 
on camera and they're and they're actually talking to the studio and watch as well i do believe it's on this one i can't remember now watch and and see if you can find any uh, i don't know whether it's on this one or the other one but watch for any you know screens that you know coincidentally go blank as well is it on this one let's have a look shall we you're at, you're over in Chelsea. Um, did you hear the explosion oh, from yes. your position? Yes, we did. As a matter of fact, we we heard it, and and because I was just like standing there, pretty much looking out the window, I didn't see what caused it or if there was an impact. So you have no idea, right? Oh, now? there's another one. Another plane just hit. <gasps> right? Oh, oh my God! Oh. Another plane has just hit. It hit another building. Oh. Flew right into the middle of it. Oh. Explosion. Oh my God! It's right in the middle of the building. This one into the east tower. Yes, yes, right in the middle of the building. It, and right now, that yes, that was definitely looked like it was on purpose. And that was definitely on purpose. When you, if you've actually watched my uh, piece of footage, what I've actually done, I have taken this footage. I've taken what I'm going to show you in just a second. And I have slowed everything down. I have actually taken this this piece of footage, and I have literally slowed it all down because I want you guys to be well. Well, you do, I just want you to. I just want to show you guys how uh, the footage was manipulated that day, and you know when sometimes the both ch well the channels all the channels were actually like almost like talking to themselves they were sharing the same feeds they were going blank there was going blank screens they were, and multiple channels did that not just um, uh, YNYW and Fox 5 uh, CNN did that as well and it's interesting to hear what some of the reporters who were actually on the scene were saying they were saying oh explosions bombs explosions bombs but they weren't saying oh i've just seen a plane but i'm i just think it's 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 fascinating stuff now this one i'm going to have to jump forward a bit uh because this is what you're going to see is is when first of all cnn actually kicks in cnn was the very first channel that that actually started broadcasting and uh, what what actually happened that day? They were the very first channel to broadcast um, the North Tower uh, live. Because what you got to bear in mind is that the Norday Brothers footage, um, that footage there, it wasn't seen at all um, until quite a ways time later. And this footage that you're going to see is the news footage which is carried and carried around the world. And there's so many pieces of footage which, like I said earlier, they dump out of delay and they come back in to real time and then they go back into delay again. And they do it very swiftly and very smoothly so you don't even notice what's going on. Last May in a series called Week of Wishes, we asked our viewers to make a wish, big or small, and then we made those dreams come true for five lucky people. For those who were chosen, the magic now has for, yet for to those of you uh, who are watching this, CNN is on the bottom left of the screen. Nothing for this match. We're two big teams who won their national championships last year, and we both have really good players. Hundred dollars a week. So they're cost effective. Everything this was live. Including you have a blast, and there's actually Tuesday, September the 11th, now, 2001. Club Med, we can go to um, yeah. there. some of the resorts. This just in, you were looking at a, obviously a very disturbing live shot there. That is the World Trade Center, and we have unconfirmed reports this morning that a plane has crashed into one of the towers of the World Trade Center. CNN Center right now is just beginning to work on this story, obviously calling our sources and trying to figure out exactly what happened, but clearly something relatively devastating happening this morning there on the south end of the island of Manhattan. That is, once again, a picture of one of the towers of the World Trade Center. When you can see these pictures, it's obviously uh, something devastating has happened. And again, unconfirmed report that a plane has crashed into one of the towers there. We are efforting more information on this subject as it becomes available to you. 
Right now we've got Sean Murtaugh. He is a CNN producer on the telephone right now. Sean, what can you tell us about what you know? This is uh, Sean Murtaugh. I just was uh, standing on the uh, uh, vice president of finance. Sean, Vice President of Finance for CNN. Sean, we're on the air right now. What, what can you tell us about this situation? Hello? Yes, yeah, Sean, you're on the air yes, right yes. now. Uh, can, what can, go ahead. What can you tell us? I, I just witnessed a plane that appeared to be cruising uh, slightly lower than normal a altitude over New York City, and it appears to have crashed into, uh, I don't know which tower it is, but it hit directly in the middle of uh, one of the World Trade Center towers. We want to tell you what we know as we know it. We just got a report in that there's been some sort of explosion at the World Trade Center in New York City. One report said, and we can't confirm any of this, that a plane may have hit one of the two towers of the World Trade Center. But again, you're seeing the live pictures here. We have no further details than that. We don't know anything about what they have concluded happened there this morning, but we're going to find out and, of course, make sure that everybody knows on the air. These are, of course, the two twin trade center buildings that are down at the foot of Manhattan that they really are. All right, so ABC have just kicked in. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to fast forward um, and I'm going to bring some of the other channels in here. That's all gone through. Let's, if not everyone, let's... Um, courts, but this, we don't know anything about... We don't know about anything that has happened here other than the fact that there's obviously been a major incident there and we're going to go. Let's have a look. So, at this point. Trade Center exploded right when I looked up and uh, at that point. See, at this point, everybody's in apart from BBC. So, you've got um, ABC over on the right, you've got uh, Fox and WNYW in the middle and CNN on the left. Uh, you got um and there's a lot of fire. Uh, I can see them from my window. Oh, is it NBC? Uh, I don't know if you can tell which tower NBC it is, top left. Uh, that's on fire right now um, or, or the kinds of as servers well. that are inside that tower. I can't tell what's inside. Now, uh, this is just this, this is quite fascinating tower, because uh, when you actually watch tower, this um, you can see uh, from what I can tell uh, the, It's uh, almost like I I totally uh, get where where you know Cameras are Jennifer, can you tell just starting to line up. About what you heard when you heard this explosion? No, they're sharing e sharing specific Absolutely. feeds, I, uh, and family, you can see I where they're sharing specific the feeds, and and some are, and, uh, are, ex uh, are exactly like the same, up, and some are slightly was different. And it's just it is it is very interesting stuff. Big ball of fire that just went up, and. And I looked, I looked around at people, we were all horrified. I, I, I'm stuck. Right, so let's fast forward it again. Stuff. I've never seen anything like it. It's just horrible. And of course, this is real cause. Right. You know, so CNN uh, are in anyone, the play now. Um, kind of, ABC, ABC, BBC have just yeah, have joined the them building. as well. Uh, you know, and. and Accidentally into it. Accidental. We know so little now, other than so. What we can these see, are the, these are the main pictures. players of the day. But and the what one of the biggest things that you could see is is the banners. The these uh, big where, banners uh, played a huge uh, part in covering up a lot of evidence jets, that day. Uh, will land, so when they off, when they did like push-ins and everything, the they cover up what the maybe the, the top, camera footages uh, or whatever they didn't want to show. And they did. These banners were played a New huge part um, at the end of the day. In this area know very well uh, when you actually see some of these live the shots as well, another very important point is, is, is how, how it looks like the, the cameras are lining up. They, it's almost the like they'll, they'll view it quite close from a certain angle as well. From it's it, it's just, I found it fascinating to watch. Um, this is all remember, it was a clear just blue sky day as well, report from ABC and, News, and we are dealing. And we the footage that you could this. see all around the realm of from these what may have the networks, Obviously a major you could see kind of that blue sky, of of but World Trade Center they kind of disguised it extremely well. Out of and as you can see. Sides, BBC and ABC are sharing the same feed there, and they do this. They did do this a lot. They did this a lot.
my apartment, but I was walking down the sidewalk, delivering my young daughter to school. And, CBS, uh, sorry, we my brain's shut loud, down. Um, Top middle is CBS, so and, it's and, like NBC, uh, you know, uh, CBS, back, BBC, and um, CNN, and uh, Fox 5, um, NY, and an WNYW. Explosion. Uh, and um, ABC um, across the bottom. Like we did. Oh, and I we were in a position where we could see. Um, right, I think it says. The other um, yeah, 902. So, what you've got to look at and know for a fact the that the South Tower is just um, about to get hit. Explosion, but think. what you're actively yeah. looking at is the so cameras and in their respective positions to these twin towers. Where I was on the street a moment ago. I've already put this in a video, and if you haven't seen it, check it out. But look, you've got to look at how they're positioning themselves. This was was done on purpose. It was done on purpose, and watch CNN. Um, and watch them. They they they, they change their positions, change their positions, and change their positions. So when uh, you, the of silhouette the occurred in of the, early 1990s, the, um, have you seen any, the plane any comes in, evidence, Elliot, of, of people being everybody the is, like I said, uh, singing from that, that same hymn, hymn sheet. It's so, all but of done. Course, the major concern is there it is. Oh human loss. I mean, do you know if there like were said, many people in the you, building? Oh, just just on the top on BBC, CNN goes goes to blank. You've got um, you see it? Yeah. CBS barely oh, showing anything, just the fireball, so NBC, you've got that, you barely, you didn't see a plane at all, and you've, when all the camera footages show a wide shot, you know that they're just about to, if, if not, have gone out, back out of delay, and that is how they did it that day. It, it, when you actually watch the footage of um, of all these and you watch them and it goes and you let let everything run you can see guys you can really see how how it how it works now i'm fully aware that it might with the, as far as the mainstream media goes it might look it might look like you know i i'm just losing the plot totally aware of that but at the end of the day like I said, I'm going to, um, I'll repeat myself. Um, in as much as um, I'll repeat myself in as much as when you know media manipulation has been going on since the 50s and the likelihood that some kind of mani media manipulation was going on on 9-11 think about what you're watching remember seeing is not always believing now when I say that I'm not saying oh you're looking at holograms or whatever I'm just saying seeing is not always believing because they'll do anything and every anything anything and everything to make you believe what Ever they want you to believe all right and that is a huge huge thing of what actually happened on 9-11 a huge false flag operation media manipulation was a huge huge part of it in fact if media weren't complicit in this it wouldn't have been able to be portrayed the way it did it, they, it wouldn't have been able to be pulled off. And I think that there's a, many people out there who have been kind of pulled along by the mainstream media ever since. And they haven't let this kind of truth sink in. Which is a shame. The media, the mainstream media today what they actively do is show documentaries of 9-11 the news reports of anniversaries of 9-11 and what they'll show is the mainstream narrative which even Lee Hamilton and Thomas Keane believe um, was set up to fail 
the official story guys is what the mainstream kind of push and not even the leads from the actual 9-11 commission believe anymore this they're set up to fail remember they don't even believe themselves that they that it was a, a job well done but in true form Thomas Keane did say though especially as far as the military goes nobody was really to blame 9-11 happened the way it did and everybody has learnt a lot from it guys it's been a this one's been a blast it really has day 6 the 9-11 blacklist 18th anniversary countdown and this has been me Lee Hapted giving you another topic another topic as we do the countdown remember on Wednesday we have got the live show and it is going to be an epic one because it's going to be the official 18th anniversary bing all right so it's going to be an epic one and it starts at nine o'clock UK time all right nine o'clock UK time be there if you're one of my eight eight thousand eight hundred subscribers if you can get there be there show your support and if you can be there you know I've got my PayPal account going on as well you know I've been demonetized but PayPal account is under there but not just that we've got the merchandise the official merchandise from the art of Nella as well any of those amazing t-shirts the cap the stickers it's all going on get onto the art of Nella click on that link get onto the art of Nella get your t-shirt show your support for the truth because the truth guys will find a way I'm out of here peace